Hi there, Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to share some playtime that I had recently with my distressed crayons. A lot of folks, I think, have forgotten how to play, so I'm going to show you how I do. I got out the patchwork stamp set from Tim Holtz and the tiles and mosaics. These are both backgrounds, and my Misty, and started stamping on some Canson XL watercolor paper. It's the really inexpensive stuff, so it's just for playtime. And if it comes out great, I'll use it on a card. If not, it's just paper. So I'm stamping them with the Misty, but I'm taking out the pad you'll see inside because with the Misty, you want to make sure that you're not fighting the pressure of it. If you have too much height in there, then you're not going to get a good stamped impression. And I'm still only going to get a somewhat good stamped impression because I am stamping challenged. <laughs> I've said that before. But for this experiment, for this playtime, these worked just great. I'm just pr applying lots of good pressure right on the stamp itself to get as good an image as I can and then removed my little tape that I held it in with since I can't use the magnets. And then I wanted to show you how I cleaned the stamps because they are so detailed. It's really hard sometimes to get all that ink out of all the nooks and crannies. But this ultra clean and a little rag, just a little terry cloth washcloth, works perfectly. You can get these rags in the auto supply section of the store really cheap. Now the other stamp set I decided I'm going to emboss. So I've stamped them with Versamark which is a clear ink that's kind of sticky so I can add on embossing powder. So I'm going to use some gold and silver wow embossing powder on these other two pieces on the other two stamp sets that I'm going to use. I can set this aside once it's got the powder on it and stamp the other one so I get the heat gun out and get it heated up all at once. And as long as it's just sitting there, it's you can wait for a while before you start heat setting it. And so now I'll get the silver one all on there and get it covered. And then I can put both of my embossing powders back into their containers and reuse the excess. And next, heat it up. This is my Wagner heat gun, and it works great to zap them. And just watching the embossing powder melt is just so much fun. So I've got this, the gold one done, now the silver one. And you can see my stamping's not perfect. And since this was playtime, I wasn't worried about it. If the pieces came out great, super. If they didn't, that's okay too. I've taped them down to a piece of hardboard now. These are the ones that are not embossed with just the Ranger Jet Black archival ink. And I just started putting colors into various hexagons on the small one. I decided to do the cool colors on one and the warm colors on the other. So I'll use the blue, the green, and the purple on the left, and the, the red, the yellow, and the orange on the right. And they are named with the Distress colors. If you want to see all the colors available in the Distress crayons, there is a chart on my blog so you can see all of those and decide which one of the sets you might want to pick up and try. But then I'm using a baby wipe to move the color around with the Distress crayons, and I'll link you to some videos at the end with lots more testing on the the Distress Crayons, they move when you deliberately move them. If you just leave it sitting there, you can't spray it and make the water move everything. You have to actually move it with a brush or your finger or something. So I'm moving it with the Baby Wipe, which is adding some moisture as if you were using a brush, but it's using my finger, so I'm getting a little more pressure. And then once it's on there, it's kind of set a little bit. So wiping across it, if you, if you did that on Distress Inked Color, it would totally mush, but on this I could just wipe across it and lighten all that color real quickly, and the color generally stays put. I'm gonna use my cool color or warm my cool colors. I'm gonna use my warm colors over here on the other side and just randomly put some in there and I'm scribbling. See? Like this is playtime and I was not gonna get all crazy about it, because if this didn't work, if my techniques weren't making me happy, it can just go in the circular file, but if it comes out great, then super. I'm just moving the color around again with the little baby wipe. And if you want to keep the colors pure, then just change the spot for your baby wipe. So you keep your yellows yellow, that sort of thing, by doing that. And just keep moving it around. And then when you're done, just quick wipe over the whole thing. And it will get kind of some smoothness going to all of it and lighten up some of that color. Now here's the ones that were embossed and I decided to try something a little different with them. 
At first I was going to make a very regular pattern in here and then I went, nah, I don't feel like it. This is playtime, let's not get anal retentive about it. So I just started putting some colors in there and I started thinking, what, what if I made them look like they were just kind of all mushing into each other behind that embossing? That would be kind of fun. When the Distress Crayons are still not fully dry, before they've sat on there very long, you can mush them with your finger a little bit. But I thought, well, let me try the, the baby wipe again and move the color around that way and see if I can really get them to blend. And they do blend, but the baby wipe does pick up color. So it lifts color while it's actually moving it around. And that's something I decided that I could play with. So first I'm gonna just get all of the color mushed around entirely first. And doing that with the baby wipe, and you can see it's doing a fairly good job. There's a few spots where it's not blended entirely, but I wanted to go back and rework some of that anyway because it was lightening the color significantly. I wanted more color on this. I wanted more intense color. So on top of this damp Distress Crayon, I'm coloring some more crayon colors and just adding more of the same so that I can get richer color. And this time, I'm just moving them with my finger because since there's a little moisture on the paper, just slightly, these are going to move and blend with my finger better this time because there's some moisture there that just has to be a small, small amount. And I was like, ooh, now this is interesting that once there is some moisture, so I needed to figure out a way to get just a little bit of moisture onto the paper and not a ton because a, a brand new wet baby wipe lifts up so much color, but this actually kept the color on there. And then I took a Kleenex and I dabbed it onto the wet baby wipe so that the Kleenex was just barely damp. And that I could go very lightly across the surface and bring back the shine of the embossing powder. So you can see how it sort of polishes it. So I'm just using very, very light pressure, very, very light. Don't push really hard or you're going to lift up color from inside all of those areas where you've just put all that beautiful color. And this will allow the shine to come through as well as having rich color underneath. And you could emboss probably over this, over top of it, if you wanted later. However, you'd have to make sure you wait until it was really dry because that Distress Crayon would hold that embossing powder. I think it would stick to it. So be careful if you do that. Make sure you let it dry really, really good before you do any stamping on top if you wanted to do embossing. So this time I'm using my already learned learnings and I'm dampening my finger on the baby wipe. So this time I didn't use the baby wipe underneath. I'm just touching my finger to the, the baby wipe just to add that moisture. I wanted some more distinct blobs of color because it's sort of all mushed together with my finger. So I'm just going to add a few sections of a couple of the different colors. I wanted more of the yellow and more of the pink. And then just started mushing them around and making sure that my finger was only containing the colors that I wanted to mush so I didn't turn it all back into one shade again. And then did the same trick with the very, very, very lightly wet Kleenex. And literally don't spray it, just touch it to some water, touch it to the baby wipe. And that's enough to bring out the shine on the surface of the paper and that embossing powder. So that was pretty cool to learn all of this about how I can play around with these distress crayons. I cut my panels into rectangles that fit onto my card, so they're all ready and I just needed sentiments. So I've taken some scrap pieces of black cardstock and I'm prepping them with the Inka Dinka Do powder tool, which I like better than the EK one that I've showed you before seems to put out more powder and be more protective of the paper. Then I stamped in Versamark ink some stamps from Clearly Besotted and I wanted to do ombre embossing so I played around with how this would work and doing it the gold first on both of them. I'll do one horizontal and one vertical and I had a couple pieces of scratch paper to catch the excess. I set that one aside real quick so I could get the silver done you could do this in multiple colors. You could do a whole rainbow of embossing if you just get yourself set up right and plan it ahead of time. Because then I can just add the second color to it, bada boom, bada bing, and heat it up and I'm ready to go. And then just return all those excess bits of scrap embossing powder to their containers. This is a great way to have a lot of fun with your sentiments. Now the 
uh, hexes on the left on the patchwork background I did add some glossy accents to so I'd have some extra shimmer but I think these came out beautifully there's a couple of my other practice pieces they aren't the most gorgeous things that I've created but they were good enough that I thought putting them on a card with a nice sentiment would still work so don't throw away all your practice ones unless they're really awful but experiment with different colors of embossing powder different ways of applying the medium and see what happens so I encourage you to try on the left is a video that I did comparing different crayon mediums in the center is a distress crayon piece of art that I did and on the right is an inky technique for making that starburst that I thought you might be interested in if you like getting your fingers dirty and using things like ink and crayons you can hit the subscribe button if you'd like to get more videos from me I put out about three a week and the supplies are all listed in the doobly-doo. See you guys next time.